Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. A $55,000 fluke. That's what that is right there. For Monroe Township's Ted Gatos and team, a 12.45 pound summer flounder, biggest I've seen reported at the Jersey Shore this 2022 season. But that was good for an across the board win this past Saturday, June 11th, in the Jersey Coast Anglers Association's annual fluke tournament. Ted's doormat from somewhere along the Raritan Bay was weighed in at the port of Sandy Hook. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's Thursday, June 16th, 2022, as we come to you with this week's video forecast. And by my mathematically challenged mind, that comes out to about $4,400 a pound for Ted's fish. I know inflation is making us all a little bit nutso right now, but that, that is one expensive flounder sandwich. Make no mistake about it. Higher than ever, gas prices are definitely affecting behavior. But even at $6 a gallon for diesel right now, probably a little bit more down at the dock, uh, folks are still running east in search of fish. But Intel, because of the lower numbers of people running and gunning looking for fish, Intel is a little bit down. Then again, if your captains Chris Jertson and Mike LaRussa, you don't have to go that far to get in on the offshore bite. Last week, last Friday, Mike and Chris were out doing a little bit of sea bass fishing and on the way in through the mud hole, they saw a big uh, swordfish finning on the surface. And Mike said he's always got his offshore gear on board and of course his HMS permit, which is a good thing across the board, right? But they see this swordfish finning, they pitch it a bait and the swordfish takes the bait and then runs right towards Mike's center console. He got within harpoon distance right there and under the watchful eye of canine mate Hooper, Hooper here does not drive the boat, Chiefy, they were able to wrangle this 325 pound BA buoy swordfish into port along the Raritan Bay shore. So no, you don't necessarily need a bigger boat. Which brings me to the June edition of the Fisherman Magazine, New Jersey, Delaware Bay. You know the cover, Patrick Sabeel on the cover of that June edition, but humor me if you will, turn to page 6G. That's where you'll find that article from Captain Scott Newhall. Yes, you can gear up for small boat bluefin. An outstanding South Jersey flounder fisherman, you know, he's below the fluke flounder pork roll uh, Taylor Ham line. Great fluke fisherman down in South Jersey. Good striper fisherman, great striper fisherman as well. Uh, and he's one of my favorite authors at the Fisherman Magazine. But he himself in the past year, have, he's been trying to figure out how to get his center console all geared up to get in on that mid-range tuna fishery. You know, he's got to get the new pen equipment. Uh, he's got to get the Sterling wide trackers. But if you turn to that article in the June edition, you too can get there on those bluefin grounds on smaller boats. Now we have not had a lot of solid reporting on the bluefin fishery this season. Talked to a friend of mine, Steve Bent in South Jersey this week. He said, oh, it was almost like they passed him by. But in the last several days, things have changed. And that's because the Manasquan River Marlin and Tuna Club, they just wrapped their 2022 Bluefin Open. They had 80 boats competing for over $160,000 in prize money. There were over 1,490 pounds of Bluefin registered in that tournament, with Chip Caruso's team netting $65,000 on Friday. But the biggest bluefin ever registered in this contest came on day four of the event when Andrew Whiting's 30-foot cobia, Deep Six, showed the big boys exactly how it's done, weighing in a 226-pound bluefin tuna on the scales there at the Brielle Yacht Club. Congrats to Andrew and crew. Congrats to all you guys who came in with some sushi-grade tuna. As a reminder, this week you have the Jersey Coast Shark Anglers Thresher fever. So quite a few boats are going to be in the offshore and mid-range grounds on the hunt for a tournament winning thresher this week. Steve at Upfront Bait and Tackle in Keyport also had a thresher weigh-in reported over the weekend for Bill Chalette, a 207-pounder caught aboard his two thumbs up on Saturday. 
So yeah, even if you're along the inshore grounds, and again, as long as you have that HMS uh, permit on board, I think it's $26 or $29, it's well worth the investment. Because if you're working those bunker schools a mile, two, maybe eight miles out, and you stumble into a thresher, lo and behold, you're there in the mix. So yeah, bluefin and thres thresher sharks on the prowl along the, well, let's call them the mid-range, mid-shore grounds at the Jersey Shore. But a few of those toothy critters are beginning to show up in the wash as well. And it's not just those highly protected sandbars or brown sharks or the sand tigers, but Andrew C. sent a few pictures over to Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle in Brigantine the other day. I took those photos, sent them to a good friend of mine who really thinks this is a spinner shark. So that's kind of interesting to see. Just be careful with those surf caught sharks. And yeah, it's not just putting your hands in the jaws. But along with those sand tigers and sandbars, they're prohibited species. Uh, and you can't target them. And you can't really, if you catch them, you got to let them go right off the bat. So if you don't know what kind of shark that is, holding it up going, hey, look at this, and posting that on social media, not a good thing. You got to release those sandbars and those sand tigers as quickly as possible. So if you know it's a spinner, you're in good shape. If you know you've got a thresher, maybe a bull, you're okay. But you don't want to get prosecuted in just from showing your social media photos. And yes, when you post on Facebook and Snapchat and Twitter and YouTube, as we see in this, it is being monitored frequently by our friends in enforcement. So keep an eye out on that and know what you're doing. One caveat to our local shark fishing, as you've read multiple times in the Fisherman Magazine since we first reported this last year, the international fisheries community has shut down the global fishery for short fin mako sharks. That's ICAT. But here's where we stand now. There was a hearing in this country in April. And then there was public comment on this potential closure, which is not even potential, it's bound to happen. Public comment was due on May 11th, which meant after that point, they take all their comments, they formulate the shark closure for Makos, they send it along to the Biden administration to sign off. However, this week I'm finding out the Biden administration has still not officially shut down that Mako fishery. It could be another week, could be two weeks, I don't know but they have to get their I's dotted and their T's crossed. So as per the HMS website, I did a screen grab from Wednesday, June 15th, you still have the ability, it would seem to bring home 171 inch male shark, Mako shark, and one, or, or you got one shark per vessel, or 183 inch female short fin Mako. You gotta roll them over and check which it is. If you can't tell the difference, Go with the 83. Loophole that it is, but it is still legal. Or as my friend Steve Bent put it when we spoke this week, if the US federal government was in charge of the Sahara Desert, we'd be looking at a sand shortage right now. Sticking into that Absecan Inlet, Brigantine, Atlantic City area, I heard from Absecan Bay Sportsman's Captain Dave Showell this week. He's been putting his charters on some pretty good back bay striper fishing or giving the nod to Noel at one stop, as Dave did. He called it banging. Folks looking to score an inshore back bay grand slam, the four key species, striped bass, bluefish, fluke, and weakfish. If you're looking for that, this is the time of year to get it done. And I would recommend the Absecan Inlet area. So you'd be looking at anywhere in Absecan Inlet. You can do it from the rocks in Atlantic City, from the jetty in Brigantine, in the back bays, perhaps Little Bay, Great Bay, uh, and parts of Little Egg Harbor. I'm sure you can get it done in Atlantic and South, uh, Atlantic and Cape May County as well. But again, Grand Slam time of year always has been right up through Father's Day and beyond. But the word we're finding on the Atlantic City, Atlantic County, Cape May County beaches, a few straggling stripers in the mix. More kingfish are showing up every day. Of course, you have those summer flounder. And there's some triggerfish and sheep's head showing up back there too. You might take along the jetty rocks. Also, as we learned from Kathy Castell the other day, you can also bang on the drum. Her husband Jay said that Kathy had her personal best drum, a 42-incher fishing clam on the Strathmere Beach. 
And of course, you also had this striped bass. So that's nice when you, you got the circle hook out for clam uh, looking for striped bass. You might also bang the drum as well. In our South Jersey report at thefisherman.com this week, field editor Anthony Califano reports that back bay flounder pounding continues in Atlantic and Cape May County waters in the back. But he did say with the water temperatures now getting into the 70s, into the upper 70s, he doesn't know how much longer that's going to last. As the water temperatures in the back start to warm up, find these flatties going to deeper water to cool off, maybe even heading out into the ocean structure. But right now, what he's saying is they're plentiful. Many anglers reporting being able to take a couple of fish home per trip. That, of course, is also assisted by that two fish slot fish and one over 18 that we've seen this year because a lot of those throwbacks finding that out on the pontoon boats like the high roller and the, and the captain john or the keeper out of margate these boats are having a higher success rate on summer flounder in the back although i did see this week where phil terrazowitz of levittown pa he tested the action at the cape may reef over the weekend brought a nine pound one ounce summer flounder into sterling harbor marina for weigh-in a good sign that those jumbos may be setting up now on the structure. Might also be worth a look along the Delaware reef sites for you folks heading out of Indian River or Lewis Harbor. In fact, the word from Lewis Harbor Marina this week is that Bennett Pretty Man caught this eight and a quarter pound, uh, eight and a quarter pound summer flounder aboard Billy Talbot's new boat Carpe Diem, seizing the day with their buddy Ricky Yamip Yakimowitz. My apologies, Ricky. For butchering your name but those fish are there they're on the grounds they're on the reef sites and who knows you'll probably find a couple inside the canals and in indian river inlet as well now if you're looking uh planning uh for a down the shore weekend ahead it looks like mostly west northwest winds in the forecast for your drifting pleasure that's saturday and sunday which of course for those in the great bay area i was Circle June 15th as the Greenhead arrival date. While well, with those west winds emptying the marshes this weekend, make sure you take plenty of Captain Ron's. When sh when folks show up on my boat and I tell them oh, we're leaving the dock, it's June 30th. It's uh, uh, meet me at the dock at 6 a.m. and they show up in shorts. I'm like, whoa, you're in for a tough day. I did have another report from Rebecca McFerrin Schaefer on the Great Bay Ground. She was out near the fish factory, said the bite was good. Bucktail and pink shine gulp did the trick with this five and a quarter pound summer flounder. So fluking in the back bay, that's a good size fish for the back. Uh, I personally have been slow to get back on the road this season. My little center console is still high and dry over there at Chestnut Neck because I needed some dock work done from that dredging project. You folks in the Little Egg area know what I'm talking about. Hopefully, hopefully soon, my friends, I'll be back out there and joining you before we uh, see those fluke enter into the ocean waters. But again, I'm hoping that we're going to get some of those sheep's head out back. Of course, next week, I will be doing the video on another road in another country. More on that and some final bell black sea bass options for you. But first, let's stay off the shore and back up in the Poconos. See what's happening with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the bass season is in full swing and is officially open now, and guys are out starting to catch some really good fish. You know, I was talking with Nick Canestra. He was out fishing the Susquehanna down by the Conowingo Pools, uh, having some real success down there. Uh, also, he says those uh, those finesse jigs, those uh, football jigs, are really the ticket for him right now. So you can also use those, those spinner baits, uh, the, the chatter baits. Uh, you got the whole list of things, especially those jerk baits, which have been real successful over the past few months. Uh, they're certainly going to work for you too. So lots of action there for the bass. Now last week we were talking about trout and you know I said we have to be careful of the water temperature for some from these trout if you're going to release them. But I'll tell you one thing I did mention if you're going out for these big brown trout in those deep cold lakes you're going to have a bit more success and boy are they a handful. Uh, Jay Batchett caught this beautiful 27 incher uh, out of, uh, of Walton Pond Pack drifting live bait. So you can have some real success there if you want to go out and try that tactic. Now that is also a great tactic 
effective for those striper, whether you're fishing Beltsville, Wallen Pond Pack, or any of these other lakes that have those stripers. So good there. Also, the Delaware still producing stripers. You can get out and work that with some of the guides or yourself with some live bait. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, uh, Miriam Santiago sent me this picture. I took her grandkids out and did a little fishing with the summer weather here. You know, summer's a great time to get those young folks out. Lots of easy stuff to catch. You can keep them occupied for a couple hours, and you got to angler for life once you get them hooked. So do yourself a favor. Get those kids into fishing. Get that next generation involved in the sport that we all love so much. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Get out and go fishing. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Final days of black sea bass fishing at the Jersey Shore ahead, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Final days, I would say, until we get that two fish bycatch allowance starting July 1st. But take advantage of it this weekend and the next several days. Most of the head boats at the Jersey Shore are going to be locked and loaded in search of black sea bass to take advantage of these final days of the spring run. At that point, I would think most of the head boats are going to turn their attention to fluking, uh, maybe doing a little porgy fishing which we do have the porgy fishery open in federal waters. That has been finalized. More on that in just a moment. And of course, some of the boats will be sailing for ling and cod. But we are getting good reports on the inshore reefs, wrecks, and snags in the past several days. Travis Taylor with a nice humpback aboard Captain Joe's sauerkraut uh, out of Leonardo. That went on top of his full daily limit. Dan Desario had a personal best aboard near fall fishing charters out of Belmar last week, a five pounder on clam, while Wendy Lawrence won the pool for this humpback aboard the Miss Belmar Princess last week as well. Again, for the latest info on what the boats are sailing for in June, who's sailing, where they're sailing, where they're sailing from, pick up the June edition of the Fisherman Magazine, New Jersey, Delaware Bay. I just so happen to turn to the Belmar pages. We have a whole list of advertisers, our partners, tackle shops, marinas, head boats, charter boats. You can find out the whole schedule. Use this as your yellow book to schedule your black sea bass fishing or bluefish or whatever has it. Pick up that June edition and don't forget, if you're picking it up at a Wawa or your favorite tackle shop, that's part of the equation. I think that's great, but don't forget when you subscribe, when you're a member for $29.95, we'll deliver the magazine to your door. You'll get digital access to the back end at thefisherman.com. And also, you're automatically qualified to fish in our Dream Boat Fishing Challenge, where our members of the Fisherman Magazine are competing to win a 23 Steiger Miami powered by a brand new Yamaha outboard. Now, last week, we were talking about the Dream Boat, and I was talking about Dean Paolella. His name came up in the forecast for the 8.7 pound weak fish that put him at top the dream boat category standings for weak fish. Well, this past Saturday, Dean also won the sea bass Calcutta on top of having a good fluke that he weighed in uh, over there uh, at the JCA fluke tournament. He weighed that in at uh, Fisherman's headquarters in Ship Bottom. Well, that 4.37 pound black sea bass that won Dean the Sea Bass Calcutta and the JCAA also put him on the Fisherman Magazine's Dream Boat leaderboard. As of this point, Dean, I believe that you are number one. You're the top dog, the guy that everybody wants to drag down number one in Dream Boat Fisherman Magazine contention. Good luck, I hope you stay there. And the rest of you who are Fisherman subscribers, I just wanna remind you, if you're out on the head boat this weekend and you score that five or six pound black sea bass, don't let the mate clean that fish. You take that one home, clean it later. But take that off the head boat, take it over to your favorite tackle shop, a certified dream boat weigh station, weigh that fish in, get all the paperwork over to us, and who knows, give Dean a run for the money over there. In the last month or so, we've been running regular reports here at the Fisherman Magazine in our video forecast, getting word from my friend Ben Gardner at Capos in Costa Rica. Ben Gardner. Hey, is that Ben Gardner's boat? Another Jaws reference for you. Hey, listen, I guess I kind of love Costa Rica. Uh, why not? But when you take a look at Ben's report, what's not to love? Hey there, guys. This is Ben checking in from Costa Rica. Hope you're all doing well. Here at the Marina Pez Vela right now, we've had an insane week for rooster fish. Just yesterday aboard my boat, Good Day, we released six nice rooster fish. 
beautiful fish in the 20 to 25 pound range. Come down here, guys, if you're looking for a bucket list rooster fish. Offshore, we've had a really nice tuna bite as well. Lots of tuna in the 30 to 80 pound range. Uh, some bigger fish in the 100 pound class as well. Really nice tuna fishing. Right now is peak season for our offshore marlin fads. You gotta look into that, guys. Best blue marlin fishery in the world. Hope you to see you down here soon. Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. Back to you guys, thank you. Love Marina Pez Vela. Uh, but I got to tell you, this week, next week, I'll be in Costa Rica again for a special project for the uh, folks at Penn and Finor Sunglasses. So yeah, I'm going to be out of the country again next week. So next week's video forecast, we'll do that from someplace on the Osa Peninsula in Puerto Amenes, Crocodile Bay Lodge. Look for that. But all I can say is while the cat's away the mice will play. Every time I go someplace for an extended period of time, things break wide open. You can expect that next week in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. The rest of this week though, to catch up, I'm gonna be working right here at my desk on the July edition where we're going to have more details on that decision last week by the Biden administration to turn the Hudson Canyon into a marine sanctuary. We've also got in that edition the recreational reform proposals that were passed out of the Mid-Atlantic Council last week. Also, a potential lead ban on federal parks. That could impact you if you're going to be throwing some lead or some lead-based uh, plastic lures. Uh, also, there's a story surrounding our potential state park collapse in New Jersey. That's all going to be covered in this July edition as I work at my desk on that. So yeah, folks, issues are coming at, at us fast and furious. Uh, that's why we try to cover it so often here at the Fisherman Magazine. We'll have more information in next week's digital edition about the Porgy situation and how the Biden administration has kept that open. And of course, you've got all the tactical information, how to, where to, hotspots, product reviews, all the latest fishing reports. That's what you get when you're a 38 time subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine. All of that coming up in the next couple of weeks here at the Fisherman Magazine. This week, look for the cover that features Melanie Hulick with a 27 and a half inch weak fish taken on a Magic Tails jig tipped with gulp while fishing with Captain Matt Curtis. Now, the weak fish reports that we're getting, thing from Southern Ocean County down into Atlantic and Cape May County, solid, continued solid weak fish reports, still some good sized fish, sizable fish, dreamboat quality fish, look for that while the North Jersey reports are still rife with giant striped bass, personal best. They will start to move east at some point very soon, but you still have that opportunity to get yourself a personal best, like Irvin Ray here found his personal best on the grounds, a 49 inch fork length, 30 inch girth. I ran the measurements, I had that at 55 pounds. Irvin said 52 which I'm sure Chuck put that on the scale. Yeah, that was another Manny Method fish. That's what it's all about. So as you're working on those bunker schools off the central and North Jersey coast, keep an eye out for those whip tails. The threshers are in the mix. Don't forget to go to HMS permits. Get your $26, $29 permit on your vessel just in case you tie into a thresher. And be on the lookout for a solid week ahead while I'm gone. We'll find out when I come back. We'll report to you exclusively next week from somewhere deep in the jungles of Costa Rica. But enjoy the weekend ahead. Catch them up, and we'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com.